Welcome to today's session hosted by Wasiliana Hub. Our session today is with Mediation Service Center leaders in Kenya, where we have a review of the Civil Procedure Act, CAP 21, of the Court Annexed Mediation Rules 2020, a document which we are referring to as the Mediation uh, post naivasha Draft 1 of the Court Annexed Mediation Rules. The document was circulated on 15th of January 2021 for mediators to be able to give their comments. And today we are hosting Mediation Service Center leaders in Kenya to be able to give us their comments on the documents and also on the development of the Kenyan mediation ecosystem. My name is Wangari Kabiru, the convener of the Wasiliana Hub Mediators Community a community of professional mediators that is, develop, that is advancing for the professional practice of mediation. We will start off our session with the words of the Kenyan national anthem, Wimbo Wataifa in Kiswahili. E mungu nguvu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukae na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. Once again, I welcome you to our session today on the eighth day of February in the year 2021, where we have Mediation Service Center leaders in Kenya giving us their review or high and highlight on the Civil Procedure Act, the Court Annexed Mediation Rules 2020, and also on other uh, points that relate to the development of the mediation ecosystem in Kenya. We will start off our discussion by inviting Jesse Law Conflict Resolution today, represented by Mr. Fred Kamiti. Our service center leaders will guide us through what they find as very good on the proposed uh, rules document. And still tied to that, they will tell us what in their opinion is missing in the rules uh, document as it is proposed uh, right now. And then they will move into giving us value add contribution to the society in Kenya, to the judiciary, to the government, or to the Kenyan ecosystem in general, and close our discussion with giving our mediators and the mediation community some valuable insights or tips for advancement of mediation in Kenya. The Silo Conflict Resolution and Covenant Mediators, uh, represented by Tabitha uh, Rutere, will be speaking with us today. So I invite the Silo Conflict Resolution, Mr. Fred Kamiti, to please kick us off on this discussion. Karibu sana, Mr. Fred Kamiti. Thank you to Wasiliana Hub and uh, my fellow mediators. Uh, my name's, uh, yeah. Uh, my name's uh, Fred Kamiti, uh, a director at Jesilo Conflict Resolution Center. Now Jesilo, Resolution, uh, Jesilo Conflict Resolution Center is uh, situated at, in Nakuru town, uh, planning to spread all over the country uh very soon and uh, we usually deal with uh, mediation training at uh, jesilo we also deal with uh, private uh, media uh, private mediation practice especially when it comes to civil dealing with families and also uh, the cpd programs and mentorship and we also carry on uh on the virtual mediation and virtual mediation training that is what uh, we do at Jesilo. Uh, our vision is to spread uh, so far, uh, I believe in the country and maybe even further, uh, the goodwill of mediation. And we are going around the country uh, actually sensitizing people on, the, on, the, on, on what is positive uh, and what uh, actually mediation entails. So today we are going to look at uh, 
some of the points that uh, we we can find in the mediation rules that have just come in, that is the post naivasha draft. And so uh, we are going to look mainly at what is uh, actually uh, very good in this document, maybe what is missing. And uh, also we are going to look at uh, the areas that are adding value to, to this particular, from this particular, uh, from this particular rules. So we are also going to look at uh, maybe what is important to we as the mediators and the mediation practitioners as a whole and see how this document will be able to, to help us uh, as we continue with our practice of uh, mediation. So in brief, that is what we're going to look at today. And uh, actually, as we were looking at this document uh, and uh, trying to see what will be of help and what is very, very good in this document, then we found uh, rule number eight and uh, specifically rule number eight, uh, that is section two, uh, H and I. When we look at uh, that particular rule number eight, and when we drop to two H, it's, it then states that the register shall contain information on the names of parties and their representatives. Uh, we found that that had been a real hurdle uh, when we were handling the when we were handling the the mediation cases, especially from the court annex, because we find that these files uh, usually came with the names of representatives and mostly advocates. And it became very, very, uh, it, it was not a good experience when we tried to, to retrieve the names of the parties from uh, these particular advocates. It became uh, very, very difficult because uh, some mediators could be denied the names of the, the parties. So the only people we could uh, have contact with were the advocates. So uh, as the rule comes, and uh, when we drop to the same rule at I, then also we find that uh, the contacts of parties and their representatives shall also be, be included in the files. So that one is a very, very good, very positive to us now that uh, it has given us uh, a proper leeway that we shall just be getting uh, the names and the contacts of these parties from the files. And we found that to be a very, very positive uh, move to be put in these roles. Now we were also exploring on, uh, on, uh, on the things that uh, are to add value or the, the rules that are actually really adding value to this document. And uh, when we were looking at that, then we, uh, to us, uh, rule number 38, which states that uh, a private mediation agreement reached by the parties uh, with the assistance of a qualified mediator may be presented at the mediation registry for purposes of registration and adoption. So actually we find in this, uh, in this rule number 38, the window of private mediation has really been opened wide. So we feel uh, pretty good for this. Uh, we thank uh, the people who drafted these rules because actually that was overdue. Uh, a majority of the people would have liked to train not only in the court annexed mediation, but also privately, because as we, as we do the pro bono jobs, then uh, we are trying to sensitize the community to, 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 embrace, to embrace mediation. So we find in the near future, a majority of the people will be coming to, will be coming actually for private mediation. Uh, at Jesilo, I believe we have already started with uh, the private uh, mediation, but it has become really, really difficult to adopt it uh, in the courts because we did not have these rules. So as soon as the rules become gazetted, then uh, I believe we shall be good to go. And that is uh, uh, 
something that really is adding value to the society, actually to the judiciary and even to the government as a whole, because now the cases will not have to go through the judiciary for them to be, to be registered, but we shall be able to do them privately. So we find a majority of the parties out there, a majority of our people in this country will actually be able to, to go for mediation directly rather than going through the court so that the cases can come again to for mediation. Now, the, the third one that we were looking at is what is actually important to the mediators. Uh, the mediators have been uh, actually been practicing without uh, much vigor because uh, they did not know, or actually we did not know where our security lies. But uh, when we looked at uh, rule number 33 on immunity, then uh, now that one gives us a lot of confidence as mediators because uh, number 33 states that a mediator in respect of a mediation proceedings shall enjoy the same protection and immunity as that granted to judicial officers and judges. So uh, when I was looking at that uh, particular rule number, rule number 33, I found that we have uh, so much immunity as we work it out on the mediation practice and which is uh, very, very positive to us. It gives us so much confidence in our practice as mediators. And I believe these rules will also cover the other areas of alternative dispute resolution, uh, maybe like the conciliation, uh, things like uh, maybe arbitration. Uh, we shall be covered so that we don't have to now I'll go again seeking for the indemnity insurance that uh, a majority of us uh, usually uh, try to look for so that they can actually be covered. So we find that we are covered and that is uh, very, very positive. So these are uh, some of the major points we came, uh, we came up with and uh, we shall continue actually uh, perusing the document so that we can uh, continue giving uh, further advice as we continue reviewing. Uh, so with uh, that short uh, brief, thank you very much, Wasiliana Hub. Thank you very much, Wangare. Thank you very much, fellow mediators. Thank you. We appreciate your contribution as Jesilo Conflict Resolution, uh, Mr. Fred Kamiti, uh, towards the mediation rules and also the generally remarks and comments that also add value to the Kenyan mediation um, ecosystem. We will move on to Madam Tabitha Rutere, who is uh, from Covenant uh, Mediators for her views uh, and also the views of their team and remarks with regard to the, uh, the court annex mediation rules, the proposed rules and also towards to the uh, comments to the ecosystem. Karibu sana, Madam Tabitha Rutere. Thank you very much. Yes, good evening again. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Tabitha Rutere. My name is Tabitha Rutere and I, I am the founder and the CEO of Covenant Mediators and the Counseling Center. Uh, our goal, our main goal is to restore human dignity through mediation and counseling. And uh, if you check what you offer, we offer security and we offer security training, mediation and counseling. These three areas actually can tell you that we are, we are geared towards restoring human dignity. Um, when we sat as a team, we realized that one very good thing in this document is that at least finally, Private mediation has been recognized, has been embraced, and is being supported by not only by not only a small group of mediators, but even the government bodies like the judiciary, the government, and uh, even by by coming up with this with the mediation rules and including a private mediation is a good step. So that is a very good thing. The document we realized what is missing is uh, when uh, when the committee was composed, the mediators 
uh, were left out. Mediation training institutes were left out. This is about mediation and mediators. So in all fairness, we feel it is key. It is very important to include the, 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 the main stakeholders. It's like we felt like um, having a mediation committee without mediators and the, medi and the medi mediation training institute is, is just like having a LSK without, without a lawyer in the board. So, or even ISPAC without having accountants on board. Or like, or, or like the Kenya Counselors and the Psychologists Association without the counselors and psychologists. Honestly, you'll not be doing much because you need to have the real people to tell you what it is that they are going through. So that is something great to me that is to us that we found missing and it, a correction needs to be done urgently. One point of value adding to, uh, is um, mediators and counselors uh, they are more or less psychological or mental healers of the society. We need to incorporate a mediator and a counselor, I would say practically to every board that is being constituted in the country. May it be a board of education, may it be a board in security, may it be a board, whatever, wherever a board is, we need to have a mediator, we need to have a counselor because we cannot do without conflict. So uh, maybe a place like Ikotu, a federation of Kenya employers, honestly, we need to have not even one mediator, so quite a number of, maybe two or three mediators representing uh, the society. Uh, and, and I would also add a mediator plus a counselor. So uh, value adding to the judiciary, to the government is let us incorporate, let us include when we are appointing boards, let us know a mediator and a counselor are, are at the core of this. And um, what I would tell my fellow mediators is together we stand, divided we fall. Currently, we have no national union that is talking for, for a mediator. We have, we have a lot to, uh, we have a lot of our views to, uh, to the government, the, to, to the institutions, even the judiciary itself. But you know, there's no one to talk for mediators. We have so many association, uh, associations, so many mediation WhatsApp groups, and so many um, mediation uh, training centers, but we do not have one national one that can actually stand and say, we are a voice for the mediators. So mediators, a challenge to all of us, can we have one national uh, forum or a federation or an organization that can stand for each and every mediator? May the mediator be the judiciary or private. Let us have a body that that can that a mediator can have, can speak can talk through. Like you realize the both the documents, both the mediation bill and the rules 2020, it is very silent about protection. Yes, they have talked about immunity, but uh, I believe I believe immunity is, is rather a general word. But if we read in details, there isn't much. Uh, security for the mediator. For example, when we talk of an advocate being in the mediation, uh, in the mediation uh, session, if the, 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 the parties, the party has a right to walk out of mediation. The advocate is supposed to advise the, 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 the his client. The mediator, of course, is a facilitator. What if this, this, the advocate and the parties do not do their parties? How is the mandate protected? So um, perhaps I can stop there. And uh, yes, with the last one, being very clear is let mediators come. Let us be one. Let us make a union. Together we stand, divided we fall. Thank you, Wangari. Back to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Covenant. Thank you very much, Covenant Mediators, for, uh, for your remarks. And uh, uh, we thank you, Madam Tabitha Rutere, for taking them to share the insights and uh, the, 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 some, the comments and the summary of uh, what are your views as a center on uh, the court annexed mediation rules and also generally uh, contributions to the Kenyan ecosystem. I will, uh, at this juncture, 
uh, be able to add um, uh, the, uh, to have the voice of uh, one of the um, uh, uh, colleagues uh, at uh, Wasiliana Hub, and uh, that is uh, Margaret Jenga. Margaret Jenga uh, convinced the uh, uh, Wasiliana Hub. Margaret Jenga convinced the Wasiliana Hub uh, program that is on uh, community uh, mediation. And uh, we would like to invite her to share her insights that uh, can also be of value with regard to the court annex mediation rules or towards the development of mediation in Kenya. Uh, good evening, Margaret. Good evening, mediate, fellow mediators. Can you hear me? My name is Margaret Jenga. Uh, and as you have heard, um, I'm, was, I'm affiliated to Wasiliana Hubs. I wanted to share on the mediators payment. I think uh, sh it should be in record that mediators should be paid promptly after they have completed their cases and they have filed their reports. Uh, the other one is, um, uh, identification of mediators, because sometimes you go to court and you are locked out just like other members, other uh, citizens, because you, you don't have an ID identification badge. I think that is very important and should be, it should be taken into account. Uh, the other thing uh, is um, where you, you find that when parties come for mediation, some of them would like to like their names, but they don't want to sign or give their contact. I think that should be, that should be, uh, I think it should be a rule. And if a, med, if a party is not, is not, uh, uh, is not, a, is not ready to give his, his or her contact or a signature in the attendance list, I think that should be, a f should be fined. Um, the other one is uh, after a compliance certificate has been issued by a mediator, I think that that matter should be termed as closed because, uh, for example, I did one and uh, the, I gave a certificate of compliance and when the client was, and when the parties were called for a mention in court, he lied to the court that he came and he, he came late and he did find us, of, of which we had waited, we had given him we had given him quite a, some time because we left that place around four and he writes the quote that he came. So the case was referred back to me. I don't think that is, uh, that is uh, very kind to mediators. The other one is uh, uh, the payment should be the same, whether uh, the, uh, no matter what is the, uh, the outcome of that mediation, May it be full, partial agreement or a non-compliance? I think a mediator had, for, for a mediator to reach to a certain uh, point, he or she has used quite, um, quite some time and he, has, he, has, he or she has spent some time in that case. So uh, the matters, all the mediation matters should be paid the same. And let me let me first stop there. Uh, thank you very much, Margaret, for your insights. And I think uh, your your comments just add on to the conversation and also um, emphasize as to why uh, mediators should take time to read um, to read the document. So I, I will also uh, add in um, um, uh, contributions uh, uh, which uh, from my end and also uh, some contributions which are uh, from Wasiliana Hub and also, and before I do that, I wish to highlight that uh, uh, we also have uh, remarks and views from other mediation um, service centers in Kenya and uh, they are, they are uh, uh, recorded and they are also uh, in written form and this will be made available so that uh, then we can be able to add the uh, to, uh, to as part of the contribution to this process uh, with regard to the development of the uh, court annexed uh, mediation rules or the to these proposed mediation rules. Uh, 
So um, I put in my voice and also, as I say, put in the voice uh, as the Wasilian Hub convener and also from uh, a couple of the, as we start to look at them. Uh, we have we also have a write up and uh, that will also be shared as I've indicated uh, but, uh, together with uh, the, uh, the the write up that is also from the other uh, mediation centers um, as we are sharing um, a joint uh, contribution to this process. So firstly, on what's good, I wish to say that it's a beautiful document. And so what do I mean by this when I say that it's a beautiful document? Um, I view that it is well thought out and it's fit for its purpose. And, but most importantly is what uh, I will call simplicity. Um, so what do I mean when I say simplicity? Uh, simplicity of language, simplicity uh, due to its coherence, hardly uh, do you have, have any contradictions. And uh, if they are there, uh, then uh, um, they, they, they seem that they can easily be uh, uh, adjusted so that they, they, are, they can be coherent. And also simplicity also because timelines are very, very clear. And those timelines come very clearly with it's uh, supposed to be done by who, how they are supposed to be doing it. Yes, um, there, there would be expectation that there are internal um, operational procedures and processes that uh, would, uh, would be uh, required to be put down so they can support um, the, the, the timelines and also uh, the indications of who's supposed to do what. And also uh, the document also has indications that there are forms attaching um, which are not available in this document. And it would be good for us to have them available so that we can see um, whether those forms also cover uh, well, they cover what is required either as information by the mediator, from the mediator or from the clients. So that simplicity is really um, admirable. And um, I say it's admirable because it really speaks into a key tenet uh, of mediation. Mediation is for the people. Mediation is for the users of mediation. And what this means is that then mediation is for the people who are in dispute and this document in as much as it is about how the court annex mediation will happen or uh, should happen, it is not a document for mediators. It is not a document for advisors to um, the persons who are in dispute. It is a document that is for persons who are in dispute. And so uh, we find that the simplicity um, and then would be something that would now enable people of different levels, different cadres, and also at the same time, uh, persons who are from, I mean, different walks of life. It's a document that they can be able to um, uh, make use of and be able to uh, uh, understand uh, with, uh, with minimal support. Um, and if that support is required, especially uh, an area we want to raise where persons have disabilities or they have special needs, then that is something that needs to be looked into, into how leave alone the court annex mediation rules document, but also how the court annex mediation program supports persons with disability, with special needs, whether they are mediators or whether they are advisors to clients or whether they are actually the disputants, um, uh, disputants themselves. But then notwithstanding that, um, the, 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 this context of the simplicity then really supports and or brings out another area that the, the judiciary must be a key promoter of this program beyond the, co the corridor of the courts. What we have is that uh, uh, persons who are not uh, coming, let's say, into the court need to know that these programs exist. We need to be able to see um, the courts uh, going out much more using the innovative mechanisms that are there. And uh, the simplicity also then allows for translation. You know, ili kutumia lugha ya taifa. Um, into Kiswahili, into uh, the mother tongue languages that we use um, um, here in Kenya. And this is particularly important when we come to the, to the IEC, the, the development, that's the uh, information communication materials, um, or I mean, as they are com commonly referred to as IEC, which would, uh, would be used in, um, like for example, in public health messaging. It's something that uh, the court annex mediation needs to look into how to adopt and be able to use that for purposes of uh, supporting behavior change. This is whether it's flyers, uh, booklets, uh, uh, radio broadcast, uh, 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 television sports, and I mean, just innovative ways that can be used as uh, social media. Something else that's um, um, important with the document is also the aspect of gender. 
the, the document keeps uh, having reference of he, him, and uh, I think it's, it's high time that we are cognizant that uh, the largest population of the mediators is actually women. And uh, whether it's women or not women, um, mediators are male and female. And the reference to that, there needs to also be a take cognizance of that. Something that I find um, either missing or something that may need to be looked into. And I attempted to do a graphical um, or, or uh, just an illustration, not a graphical, an illustration of it. And I will use this paper to just try to explain it. And it's what I am calling a mediation party. Uh, when you look at the mediation room, uh, based on the way the document has uh, tried to, 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 when you put it together, and that's what I'm saying about parts of coherence. Uh, we have the mediator here, and then we have the client A, and then we have client B. Then now let's move on. If the mediator has an, a mentee, so the mentee is the, right there, then now let's now consider that uh, this is a mediation whereby the client, each of the clients have an advisor. So client A has an advisor one, and this advisor could be the representative they've come with. And this representative, let's consider because the document now says that for, for instance, an apprentice can come in. There's an apprentice who has also come in. Client B also has the same thing, has an advisor and a, an apprentice. I think this is too much of a party already. If these are the clients, I would experience intimidation of clients. There is already too much that is happening by persons who are coming in as representative. The mediators, then we have advisors and advisors on this side. I think there needs to be a consideration. And most important um, around that, the, when, when, when you look at this model and when you draw it, is that then, uh, it, it not only um, now talks into issues of relating to confidentiality, power dynamics I've said about uh, an experience of intimidation. There's an experience that there are too many people in the kitchen. There are too many people who are under the car in the garage. You know, the car, is the, the car has one driver and now we have 15 people under the car. Yes, sometimes that's required, but I think there's need to look at how to, mo to moderate, you know, the sequence of how many people are in any one uh, mediation room. Uh, whether it's um, they are supporting the clients, otherwise we overwhelm not only the mediation process, the mediator, but most of all um, the clients. Um, allow me to give a value add to the Kenyan um, um, uh, mediation um, ecosystem. Um, access, 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 access is king. Access is queen. Access is queen. Access is king. And Kenya is ready for a decentralized resolution system. Kenya is ready for what I call a dear system. Decentralized, decentralized. What does decentralized decentralization uh, or decentralized release, uh, resolution system now look like? It means that the court annex mediation rules now need to have recognition of what we call the mediation service centers or what is referred to as the mediation centers. It is time that we um, meaning we, we reduce on getting people into one fun into into a funnel and then now we start sieving them out for mediation how can the courts be the center of getting persons to access mediation out there it is great that there is recognition of private mediation but also it is time that there is recognition and registration of mediation centers in kenya with that then the public will actually now know where can they go to so that they can be able to access services. And if they so choose, then the matter can actually, um, or the agreement can actually be registered um, in court or in any other place. So uh, yes, we will have the opportunity to discuss on the decentralized resolution system, which is um, the concept that we really, really hold that will support Kenya to be able to cause mediation to diffuse versus, you know, bringing it now to a center and then now trying to have mediators getting jobs from the courts. We need to get mediators getting those jobs outside in a system that is uh, much more organized. Let's recognize um, in the court annex mediation rules, the mediation service centers across Kenya. 
Um, one, one important po point that one point that's important for mediators, um, and I think for mediators, we probably need to start getting cognizant to the fact that we probably are getting to a place whereby when you go for your mediation interview, probably the question you'll be asked is actually sitting in this document. It's sitting in the court annexed mediation rules. And it could be whether it's a panel that is in the courts or uh, attached to the courts or not attached to the courts, or even it's just important that we take time to read um, this, this um, uh, court annex mediation rules, take time to read them, not only just to read them, but also to master them, uh, master them once uh, the final rules are out. And uh, I'm saying again, I suggest don't just read them, but also take time to internalize them, then you can be able to better support your clients and also better support the advisors to clients who come because you have mastery of the contents of the document and are able to support them from stage to stage. Um, while saying this, I say that the reason why it's important um, as a mediator is not just for you. It's important for your clients or it's important for we as mediators we master this document for the sake of our clients, then we can better be able to support them in the mediation process. So those are general remarks with regard to what's really, really good about the document. So I think it's a great document. Um, there are many comments um, that are uh, on areas we find that are positive with it. Some we find that are not um, uh, uh, very forward looking or uh, that could have adjustments. And that is in our, um, our main contribution document that will be shared out um, subsequently. So I wish to thank you. Those were highlights of uh, contributions uh, from Wasiliana Hub. And at this juncture, we will be uh, doing a round robin and we will be going round uh, well, and we will invite um, our mediators, covenant mediators, followed by Margaret Jenga uh, of, uh, and then followed by Fred Committee of Jessilo Conflict Resolution for your closing remarks. Um, at this session. So we invite you, uh, mediator Tabitha Rutere uh, of Covenant Mediators and Counseling Center for your kind uh, close remarks for this session. Thank you, thank you for that, Wangari. Um, I wish we could mo have more interactive forums like this because I believe uh, two hands are better than one. If we have more mediators and uh, training institutions having such forums, we would actually grow mediation and mediation services to greater heights. Otherwise, I'm, 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 I'm impressed and I've learned so much. And uh, at least I'm better than uh, when I joined uh, the, 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 the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Covenant Mediators. Uh, Margaret Njenga, uh, would you have any remarks uh, uh, to close, help us close the session? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this opportunity. I thank God that I was able to join this, this uh, session. And it is my prayer that we will keep on uh, discussing about these, uh, these mediation rules. And this is the high time that we have a body that is governing mediators because we are so many mediators, so many organizations, so many training, uh, training institution, but we don't have a body that is governing mediators. I think this is the high time that all mediators should come, should come as one and have a body that will govern all of us. So, uh, Tabitha said, uh, Tabitha, Tabitha, I think I had Tabitha saying that once divided we fall and united we stand. I think this is the high time that we come together and unite all of us as mediators and we have a governing body. Thank you and have a blessed night. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Margaret uh, and Jenga for your uh, remarks uh, this evening, and uh, we uh, now welcome Jesse Lock Conflict Resolution, uh, Mr. Fred Committee, for your closing remarks. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Wasiliana Hub. Uh, it has been a nice uh, and beautiful uh, forum.
uh, to discuss on uh, the mediation uh, rules. Uh, that was critical and uh, very, very important so that actually we could uh, be able to understand the documents better. Uh, I'm going to support uh, So I really, uh, I really want to uh, support my fellow mediator Tabitha uh, by saying that we really need a national body to to support the mediators, and uh, that will be our voice. So that uh, whenever we really want to communicate, maybe to the authorities, anything to do with mediation, then the body will be of. Uh, very, very uh, a good help. Uh, so I also uh, like to also to to reiterate the same words by Wangari that uh, the document was uh, simple, simple and clear, so that uh, everybody could understand. And also that uh, the 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 centers should be uh, a center of focus by the government, and that the centers should be recognized and registered as such. So uh, the forum has been good. The mediation bill also uh, that is pending in parliament, I think uh, it's a high time they should hasten it so that we can, uh, it can start operating because uh, it has been in parliament for so long. They should make it fast so that it can be enacted and so that uh, we can start operating by the rules. Also with the mediation bills, we do not uh, wish that it takes too long before it gets gazetted. Uh, as soon as it gets gazetted, the better. And uh, actually if they are going to amend the document, they are going to, uh, we wish they are going to amend it uh, uh, to serve the purpose that we, the mediators and the clients, uh, uh, actually, we need this document to represent us <clears throat> better so that they should be very careful when they are amending. <clears throat> they should also take our views uh, as the major points because we are the people who are representing mediation in this country. So I think uh, it has been a very good move by, by Mark and the government as a whole. And we say thank you very much because uh, we believe with the Article 159 of the Kenyan Constitution, then we really, really feel uh, things have been implemented. And uh, to finish, I'm going to say that uh, uh, we also shall wish that these documents shall be uh, implemented, not only documents that will be shelved out there. So uh, with, the, with the judiciary, they should implement whatever is there in these documents. With the mediators, we should implement and uh, every other stakeholder should implement what is actually in the document. We don't want to see a document whereby these rules and maybe with the mediation bill that is pending in parliament when they are enacted and gazetted, we don't want to see things not implemented. So I think that is my final word. And thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vasiliana Hub and my fellow mediators. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jesse Law Conflict Resolution for uh your remarks uh, as uh, the closing remarks and also for the uh, value add contribution um, during this session. I think on my, on my side in um, closing remarks, I wish to point out that uh, it is important that there's a distinction between qualification and accreditation. Uh, mediators may require to be qualified, but they do not necessarily require to be accredited by any one panel or they could choose which panels they wish to be accredited by, but the qualification is what is critical, that there's clarity in Kenya with regard to what qualifies you as a mediator, whether to practice uh, independently, whether to practice as part of the court annex um, uh, mediation panel, whether to practice as part of um, a government panel, for example, the uh, Nairobi Center for International Arbitration, or whether to practice as part of a uh, 
corporate that is running a panel or uh, whether to practice as part of a church institution that has a mediation panel. It is after qualification, then panels actually can be able to put down what are their guidelines. The same way we are looking at this um, court annex mediation rules. These are the rules then for you to be able to participate in the court uh, panel um, on one part. And in addition to that rules that may support then uh, the recognition of the uh, mediation agreements that are not necessarily um, done uh, through the court or they could be court connected. Um, then uh, uh, I, I think something else that uh, has been mentioned by uh, Fred is that uh, mediators need to take time and read the documents that are roaming around them. Because these documents, whether it is on the aspects of value addition to, um, to cause them to be amended, it's not someone else who's sitting out there it is the mediators who require to be able to do that. Uh, in this same discussion, uh, views that uh, uh, that I've heard is that yes, there is need that, uh, that what uh, what uh, what is agreed upon or what arises out of this is executionable. And I think for me, that's one of the things that really makes me say that this document is a beautiful document because not only is it in writing, but I can see it being executionable. Um, some aspects I remember when we were looking at the mediation bill, some aspects of it are not executionable to the fullest. And so they will stag they could stagnate um, the uh, mediation uh, in the country. And then ultimately we end up saying that mediation is not working or is not working as well or not working for everybody. Um, something else that I've heard um, in this discussion in the closing is that it's important that the views of mediators are, uh, are, are considered. And uh, I, I believe this is also in the the context where we say multi-stakeholder uh, participation is really one of the best routes. Clients, um, mediators, advisors to clients, uh, the judiciary, the government, all these people have views that are important. The, uh, the other aspect that I've had uh, within the closing remarks is with regard to a need for a national representation uh, as mediators. Um, uh, yes, we are, we, we, we are are very clear that um, uh, for progressive uh, professions that there is um, not only um, national representation but there's also a lot of grassroots uh, entities that are able to represent uh, the professions so that then there can be diversity there can be progression and it's probably something for uh, mediators to um, consider so in uh, a brief that has been uh, those have been views from um, mediation service center leaders and we wish to thank them for their contribution. Uh, they've given us um, key highlights with regard to what they really, really think is very good uh, or with regard to the, uh, the Civil uh, Procedure Act, CAP 21, uh, the Court Annex Mediation Rules 2020, uh, which was circulated on 15th of January in the year 2021, or what we are referring to as the Kenya Post Naivasha uh, Draft One of the Court Annex Mediation Rules. So we wish to thank the Mediation Service Center leaders for joining us um, in this conversation. We have had other conversations with uh, Mediation Service Center leaders. The recordings will also be made available, so please look out for them. And also please look out for the joint uh, uh, review document that uh, will be released. Uh, that includes the, uh, re the, the views from the Mediation Service Center leaders and also from their teams. And that's, um, it gives much more insights into the views that, uh, the views that uh, can be used to add value to the uh, proposed documents. So at this juncture, today is on the eighth day of uh, February in the year 2021. We will be closing our session with the words of the National National Anthem, Wimbo wa Taifa, Kwa Luga ya Kiswahili. E mungu nguvu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukai na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. We wish you a very good, uh, the rest of the day, and uh, thank you for the time. God